There are some very old old stories. There's a story about Sadar Bahadur Jagat Singh, who became the master after Baba Sahib. He was master for a short while, but there's a very interesting story just before he became master, which might interest you. He was living in a house slightly away from the great master's house, and the great master used to call him sometimes after dinner, for some work, for some talk, for showing him some letters that came from Satsangis. Uh, so one day, by that time, more ladies came in into the campus. So there were three ladies. Bibi Rukko had passed on by that time, and three ladies named Bibi Rali, Bibi Lajo, and Bibi Rakhi. Three ladies came in, and they managed the affairs of the Dera. So Bibi Lajo went to ask uh, uh, Sadar Bahadur Jagat Singh to come and see the master because the master was calling. Master said, "Go and call Jagat Singh. I want to talk to him." That was about ten o'clock at night. She went down the stairs to the house and said, uh, "The great master is calling you." So he he said, "Okay, I'm just coming." So he came. In the meantime, great master was busy, maybe changing in one of the rooms, and uh, so the, uh, Baba Jagat Singh came outside and knocked at the door. And the same lady, Bibi Lajo, opened the door. She said, "Oh, you have come. Hold on, I'll just inform the great master." Then she just closed the door to go and inform the great master and bolted it and went to tell the great master. Somehow she saw the great master was in the bathroom. She waited. Then she got busy with something else, and she forgot about. It. And there was another staircase from the other side, from the kitchen side. Then she locked the house. Great master retired in his bedroom, and she locked the house and went down and went to sleep. In the early morning, she came back from the kitchen side, brought a cup of milk for the great master, maybe about uh, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, and uh, told the great master that I have brought this. He said, "I thought I had uh, uh, called somebody at night." And she said, "Oh yes, I had gone to Sadar Bahadur Jagat Singh to call him, and uh, I forgot. When he came to the door, I said, 'Wait here, and I just informed the great master. I hope he's not waiting still.' She ran out and opened the door, and he was waiting there all night. He stood and waited. The great master wants me, and the lady in charge says, 'Wait.' So he waited. All night, he didn't think of knocking again. He didn't think of going back. There was a love and devotion, which now looks like a story. How these people became masters with a kind of love and devotion, which is hard to believe. Some satsangis, after the great masters passing on, were very disappointed because they missed the great master who had initiated them. And they said, "It's true, Sadar Bahadur is a very good satsangi and he is full of uh, devotion, but maybe he is not the same guru, the same master." We had lost our master, so some of them decided to go and uh, consult the new master. When they went there and they put their heads down, they felt that they heard the voice of Baba Sahib. They opened their eyes and there was Baba Sahib sitting there. It took them several minutes before they could realize that no, it was Sadar Bahadur Jagat Singh. This experience happened several times after Sadar Bahadur became master, and then they were convinced that there is no difference between masters. But all the masters are the same, and only they perform their role and they deal with their marked sheep, their own allotted quota of human souls whom they have to help. During that period, my mother-in-law had an interesting experience with Sadar Bahadur. I can narrate that because it happened within my own personal knowledge. She was afraid to travel, and she used to say that whenever she had problem of traveling alone, she could go to the great master. I say, Great Master, I am going there. Is it all right? Safe? Will my job be done? The Great Master used to close his eyes and say, Yes, go without fear. It's all right. You remember? And then uh, she said, Now Great Master is gone. How can I travel? And she had to travel up in the hills, all alone, in buses, change buses. She said, uh, It's very difficult. What will I do now? Somebody suggested, Masters are the same. Why don't you go to Sadar Bahadur, Master? And asked for his help, so she went to Sundar Bahadur and asked uh, if uh, she could go. He said, "Sure." Are you afraid? He said, "No, but I thought uh, I could come to the Great Master, and he would always give me help and support on the way. I would never run into difficulty." Now I didn't know whether I should come to you or not, but I have come. And uh, the Sundar Bahadur said, "No, no, the Master will be with you as before." So she left on the journey. In that bus, she had a very strange experience. 
she sat on one side and the other side sardar bahadur was sitting she says, how come you also also came along she didn't know that it was only her own vision she thought he was actually traveling he said don't worry i am taking care of you she traveled changed buses he uh, traveled along with her she said where are you going she said i am going where you are going and he stayed with her all the time in visible physical form and every time she wherever she went she would go to buy a book at the bookstore he would go with her he wouldn't leave her for a second she recalls and she told me that ultimately she had to go to the restroom and say please sir hard bother now you stay out <laughs> <laughs> and she had this personal experience this far bother mara ji this far bother master with the present master also she had a very interesting experience so i'll tell that story also she used to complain that her problems were taken care of by the great master who initiated her now who will take care of the problem even sadar bahadur has gone he stayed as a master for a short while as he says look my house is not built i was trying to build my house and complete it for years the land is there we got the material we can't build it we don't have the money that man took the loan from us he is not giving the money back not returning the loan look at that guy he is not doing this look at my son eldest son he's gone to minneapolis in usa settled down there married an american girl doesn't want to come back i am left high and dry if these problems had come before me earlier i would have gone to the great master and said master what is this going on and he would say don't worry i'll take care of it who can i go to now when this was happening she talked to me also about these problems and i suggested to her why don't you talk to the present master there's no difference in masters so she says there's one difficulty of talking to the present master uh, baba charan singh because he's so young he knows me as a sister in law he calls me babi ji that means sister in law and he pats me on the back and he has got a such an informal way of dealing with me i don't know if i can tra- treat him as a master i don't know how i can talk to him but those masters were full of awe and they're at a distance from me but this one is so informal with me i don't know what to do he comes asks for some cookies and takes some drink for my uh, fridge and chats around like any member of the family how can i ask him for these things but uh, i said you may try she said i can't try as it happened next week the present master went over to her house and then he went over he said now what's cooking and so on after those informalities he sat down next to her and said now tell me whatever you want you tell me what you want ask what are your wishes so that they can be fulfilled she was taken aback he says you mean seriously he said i mean very seriously whatever you want will be given to you ask what you want she said oh uh, is it is it really true he said yes it's true whatever you ask now will be given to you she said okay let me think <laughs> <laughs> she says maybe my house should be completed soon he said that will be completed within the year it will be completed very soon she says ah that's good and we should also get that money back the 25000 bucks that man owes us he said all right you'll get the money back also what else she said oh my younger son he couldn't he couldn't get through in the examinations he should also pass in his exam so he can get a job okay he'll also pass what else she said well there was another financial matter which was not being settled that should also be settled he said that will also be settled what else she said what else she said i can't think of anything else he said no no think again you may like to wish for something whatever you will ask you will get she said i don't think i can think of anything else at the moment <laughs> he said no no whatever you ask now you ask you will get it he said i think i have got all i wanted i don't think i can ask for anything more he said all right whatever you have asked you will get after that very soon all these things he got and i went to her and i said are these the four things you asked for the great master uh, the present great living master gave you an unlimited opportunity to ask for anything you could have asked for such kind you could have asked for him you could have asked for love of the master and this is all you gave asked for he says yes yes i made a mistake i missed out one thing what did you miss out i missed out about my son in america <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting story about the present master in 1955 the present master wrote a letter to me i was then posted in one of the hill districts and he wrote to me that he would like to come and stay in my house for a few weeks 
along with his kids and along with his uh, his uh, brother-in-law's kids. I was in a place called Kandagant. I had a big house with five bedrooms, official house, in my civil service position. So the present master, he came and stayed with me. I was a bachelor, not married at that time. He came and he said, I'll take care of all your cooking, your kitchen, everything. You're a bachelor, don't, you don't bother. You've got ladies in the family, the master's wife was there, the master's uh, uh, wife's brother and the wife's brother's wife was there. So he said, a lot of kids are around. They'll take care of everything. You be our guest in this house. I said, that's fine. Suits me fine. I always like if somebody else takes over from me. I said, if the master takes over, what else does one need? So we had about three weeks of holiday at that time in 1955. After three weeks, the master came to me and he said, you have a beautiful house. You have a beautiful environment, lovely place. The only thing that's missing is the one that I have for you. I said, what is that? I thought I was initiated long ago. What else am I missing? He said, you're missing a wife. And I said, am I? He said, yes, so there's a girl who is going to be your wife. And I said, where is she? He said, she's in Delhi. And I picked her out for you. I said, that's fine. So, uh, he said, uh, would you like to talk to her? I said, my mother is in Delhi. She can talk to her. I made a long distance call to my mother. I said, the master is here. He says, I need a wife. And the girl is in Delhi, uh, about 200 miles away. Now, would you like to see her and uh, decide if she is suitable for me? We have arranged marriages like this. My mother said, but if the master says she is right, well, what is there for me to see? You say yes. So I said, my mother says yes. So I say yes. And the master said, fine. Now we'll fix the date of the wedding. And that's how I got married to my present wife. So very often, I have thought that my wife is a gift to me from my master, from the present master. This was, uh, this happened in the summer of 1955. I married in November.